Hey guys, I'm Sun. I'm a privacy and a security researcher, and you're watching The Privacy Guides. Uh, one of you recommended uh, an episode of the Joe Rogan Experience uh, where Moxie, uh, who is the founder of Signal, uh, is guest, and that episode is really cool, so thanks for mentioning that. While listening to the episode, um, Joe mentioned two things that he didn't like about Signal. Uh, one of them is that when you're writing to people, they see the little ellipsis, so they know that you're typing and he didn't like that, but that's something that's super easy to fix in the preferences. And I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. I also showed you guys how to do this, I believe in my last episode on Signal, which I'll link in the description. Now, the other thing that he doesn't like, and I'll let him explain. I have two bones to pick with you guys. Yeah. Two things that I don't Just necessarily like. Right. One, when uh, I downloaded Signal and I joined, basically everyone that I'm friends with who was also on Signal got a message that I'm on Signal. Uh -huh. So you ratted me out. So yeah, number one problem that Joe has uh, with Signal is that when he uh, configured Signal for the first time, all of his contacts uh, were notified that he is now on Signal. And uh, yeah, that's actually a problem that I also kind of have with Signal. I wish there was a way for Signal not to do that. But uh, the real solution, I believe, to this problem is to use a separate phone number for Signal. There are multiple benefits to doing that. One of them is that I don't necessarily like the fact that the people with whom I have signal conversations know what my real phone number is. And the reason for that is, uh, among other things, a lot of banks will use that phone number for two-factor authentication. And SIM port or SIM swap hacks are actually uh, something that is prevalent. Uh, now, the other reason is a lot of accounts uh, when you call in for tech support or whatever, uh, they'll say like, oh, what is your phone number? And it's one of the things that people tend to use to authenticate us. So I really like having a separate identity on Signal. To achieve this, we've talked about that in my last episode on Signal. I'll link it in the description, but the, the uh, reference material on how to create a Signal account using a personal phone number uh, without, sorry, using a personal phone number, there are two ways. Either you get yourself a prepaid SIM card uh, and then use that one while going through the uh, signal registration process. The other way is to use Twilio uh, to buy a virtual phone number and just forward calls and SMS uh, text messages to your real phone. And that will kind of create a bridge and it will allow you to register a signal account. And that is what I am going to show you guys today. I won't go through all of these steps. Uh, I'll link to the episode in the description, but I will show you guys how uh, we go about making sure that contact discovery is disabled. So as I said, it kind of needs a new phone number and then the rest is really a question of how you use Signal. So let me start recording here on my iPhone. Okay, so when you pop open Signal for the first time, um, you go through the wizard. So, okay, you can read the terms and privacy policy and then uh, we need to uh, enable permissions here. Signal would like to access your contacts. That is the part, and I'm talking to you, Joe, you wanna make sure that you don't allow this. That means that Signal cannot know who your contacts are. Therefore, it cannot enable contact discovery and let them know that you're using Signal. Clearly, you need a new phone number for this, but that step is so very critical. Now, Signal would like to send you notifications, no problem there. Then I registered uh, a phone number on Twilio. Uh, that is essentially a test phone number just for this episode, so please don't try to get in touch with me through that. Uh, now, I also forwarded text messages to my real phone so I can go about activating my Signal account here. So I won't show this on screen, but uh, now I'm in, so I can go about re registering without transferring data from another phone. I can go about typing my name here. And once this is done, uh, we need to create a PIN. Uh, I would recommend using an alphanumerical PIN and storing it in your password manager, for instance, or uh, you know somewhere safe. But for the purpose of today's episode, since I'm not, this is not a full walkthrough of how to, you know, harden, uh, secure signal or how to create a signal account, I'm just going to disable it just to move through the next step quicker. Uh, and that is where signal will ask us again to enable contacts. And I will tell it not now. And if ever it reminds me about this, I will tell signal to not, I will not allow signal to have access to my contacts in the future. Once this is done, the other problem 
that Joe had uh, is really easy to solve. If you go in privacy, you just disable typing indicators. So that's really a piece of cake. So Joe, if ever you're listening to this, uh, those two steps using you know a separate phone number, not allowing signal access to your contacts and disabling uh, typing indicators in uh, the settings, that is it. Signal is an amazing project. It's actually pretty simple to fix those two problems. So I hope this is helpful to others as well. Now, clearly, if Signal doesn't have access to your contacts, uh, if you go about initiating a new conversation, no one will be there. So you have to click on find by phone number. And then if you know the phone number of someone that is on Signal, you can initiate a conversation. And from that point on, the conversation will be there forever for you to you know, keep on conversing, if that's even a word. So that's all I have for you. I hope this was insightful. Um, Joe, if ever you're listening to this, privacy matters. Please have a look at the Privacy Guides project. And yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye.